The District is brought to you by Stuff Picks, bringing the best crime, documentary and mystery movies of the big screen to your screen. Just a quick warning, this series contains explicit language. Episode 2, The Brother. G'day. Alright, how you going? Alright. Shit, the cops will be getting a bit scared if we know we got this sort of... Were they? Up here, hey? Were they? <laughs> yeah. Be panicking we've got our own squad. <laughs> this is Des Thomas, and yep, he's a character. Oh, yeah, you probably get promoted in the next Queen's Birthday Honours, eh, if you're, if you're a policeman. <laughs> No, you have to plant evidence to do that. Don't Des I? is connected with a notorious New Zealand murder case. Who killed Harvey and Jeanette Crew? A 48-year-old mystery so famous, there are numerous books and a movie about it. Come on, you old bugger. What are you done with the bodies? Why would I want to murder my own daughter? You tell me. So we've come to meet Des Thomas. In Pukekawa. In the district. Hmm. Hello. People want that cheeky dog's life. Yeah, you fucking live like that, eh? Just stood out like dog's balls. Alright, how are you going? Howdy. Everything's been covered up. This is a stuff circuit podcast called The District. A story about injustice, about a murder investigation that goes off the rails, about gossip and whispered accusations, but mostly a story about people. People who are trying to get on with their lives but can't. This story is produced by Toby Longbottom and Paula Penfold, with field recording by Phil Johnson. I'm Eugene Bingham. Vote. Thank you. Is the car okay there? Absolutely fine. A bit yeah. of a recap. Okay. Great. In episode one, we introduced you to Lynette Stevens. Was he like a coffee us. or tea or something? Her brother, oh, Murray gosh. Christensen, because he was a rat bag. was killed. Murray was run over by the bulldozer. A bulldozer driven by a guy called Carl Lobb. Yes, with a K. Carl. Lynette was telling us how she discovered Carl Lobb had a connection to the crew murders. Carl Lobb was a witness. In 1970, crew murders. So she began looking at him very closely, and she found out that he was a secret witness for the police at the Royal Commission into the crew case. There's just so much in there that shows he's She believes he lied when giving evidence under oath. And he's got caught out lying, and nobody did anything about it. And it was a closed court hearing, so nobody would hear about it in New Zealand. It's just, you know, they just brush all the stuff under the carpet. And... And make out that someone like me is a nut job, I suppose. <laughs> but yeah. Remember, Lynette discovered strange goings on after the death of her brother. Thanks so how the case much. against Carl Lobb collapsed. How it all just fizzled out and no one was held responsible. No justice for Murray at all. But I'm still struggling with why Lynette thinks the death of her brother in 2011 has anything to do with a double homicide way back in 1970. Can we just boil it down to how do you think? What happened to Murray, and and not so much what happened, but what yep. happened afterwards, how was that connected to the crew case? Well, I think when the police got there, um, the senior police, uh, they were, the name Carl Lobb would have come up, that he had killed someone, and they thought, right, we've got to do something here to make this go away. We cannot have this guy before the courts. Just a bit of background. When police spoke to Carl Lobb in 1970, He didn't remember anything useful, but 10 years later, he tells the police that he saw a car towing a trailer with what he thought were bodies under a cover. The car, he says, is like one belonging to a guy called Arthur Allen Thomas. So the police put him forward as a witness to the Royal Commission. His evidence is rubbished, but part of Lynette's theory is that the police continue to look after him all these years later. You know, you scratch my back. I'll scratch yours. I believe, and I, uh, I find it hard to get rid of these feelings, that they've all been in cahoots to make this all go away, to, to just make it all disappear so that nobody... And they must be so annoyed with us because we keep coming up with ways to um, 
throw a spanner in the works. And so they why just, do you think they want it all to go away? Because they don't want anyone to find out about um, who really did cr kill the crews. You think it's all tied up? I do. If there were some grand conspiracy to cover things up and make everything go away, there was a flaw in the plan. No, I was uneasy right from the word go. No one counted on Lynette Stevens. It just doesn't seem right. I, well, there were no witnesses no, in court. Right. As you'll know by now, she was never going to go away. He told me to watch what I wrote on Facebook. And he, he just sat me. there and blatantly he lied. And he even we just couldn't believe what came out of his mouth. He muttered and mumbled. Roger and it was just sitting there looking at him. She's tenacious and persistent. She's not just a dog with a bone. The whole case fell apart because it She's a dog like that it. goes around digging up old bones all around the neighbourhood. The, the first day was an absolute shock Second and a half. We were just absolutely flabbergasted. We just sat there like, what? She seeks people out. I've got a letter from Chris Finlayson. Hunting down clues and finding ways to expose what she thinks is the truth. And she just looked like an absolute liar in court. Right. Which is why she ended up contacting Des Thomas. I rang Des. And why she ended up putting Des Thomas in touch with me. All right, my name is Desmond Thomas and I live in Pukekawa. And um, the reason I'm fighting this is because uh, there's too many injustices in this country and this case is solvable and um, the police have to back down and admit they're wrong. There's been no apology to Arthur. And um, Arthur's your brother. Arthur Thomas, my brother. You don't give up when you know the man is innocent. Des's brother, Arthur Allen Thomas, was convicted twice of the 1970 murders of Jeanette and Harvey Crew. Arthur is innocent. A Royal Commission cleared his name in 1980. He was given a pardon and $1 million in compensation. We should recommend to the Governor General that he exercise the prerogative of mercy and pardon Arthur Allen Thomas of the conviction of murdering Harvey and Jeanette Crewe. The Thomases are a large family, nine kids in all. He was Ray and then, it, then Arthur. Well, there was, okay. there was another one youngest. in between, but he died. He died. OK, so then there was Arthur, and then there was Rita, another girl, and then was Lenny, and then there was Richard, and then Lewis, then myself, and then Lloyd, and then Desmond. The baby. <laughs> See, the baby. Yeah. Look at him. <laughs> I am. <laughs> Still get told what to do. <laughs> that's not quite true. You'll see that it's Des Thomas who's driving this, and that's because he thinks the Thomas family name has never been cleared. And he believes that's because the police won't accept that Arthur is innocent. And Des isn't the only one who thinks that. Right, we've right. got uh, Margaret there, my sister. Hi, and Hi Margaret. Buster. Hi. Pleasure to meet you. Hi, Buster. Good you to meet are. you. Eugene. You Eugene. How are you? Hi. And hi. Nice to meet hi. you. Hi. Nice to meet you. Hey, Buster. Hi. You are? Hi. Phil. Pleasure to meet you. Hi. 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 Yeah, there are a lot of firm country handshakes to get through. The introductions are as shambolic as the pile of gumboots and shoes at the front door. Des has gathered his sister, Margaret Stuckey, and her husband, Buster Stuckey, to meet us. They've literally formed a Justice League to fight this. And it feels like we've been summoned to a court hearing. It's kind of a weird setup. The three of them on one side of the table, us four on the other, loads of files in between us. Well, we've got a high day so you can record what's Yeah, doing. yeah, yeah, exactly. Except this is a farmhouse, not a courthouse. No. And, and um, nobody's shipped us up yet. So, Des, you got in touch with us because there's some specific things that you've got concerns about. Well, the actual... Never came off the Thomas trail. It had nothing to do with uh, the, the Thomas bullets. Family. I can show you that the bullets from Arthur's the rifle didn't kill the crew. Has actually left this and case. the ballistics evidence shows that. Now the right, they've they've taken done. more wire off Arthur's well, farm than anybody else's. They launch into passionate arguments, presuming we know much more than we do. Because they live and breathe this. I told him that you have to accept that Len Demler had a 1422. Yeah. And he said, no, no, it was a 360, 360. I said, no, it wasn't. Yeah. I might be saying yes, yep, and yeah all the time, but it's only because I'm trying to keep up. Actually, it's pretty confusing and overwhelming. There's a lot of detail to, for us to get our heads around, isn't there? OK, we've tried to keep that simple, though. Yep. Okay. It's not. Don't worry, I couldn't follow most of it either. To get our heads around everything. But what is immediately clear is their boiling frustration, the gnawing sense of injustice. 
And what I'm starting to realize is that what infuriates all of them the most, Des in particular, is the feeling they never get listened to. The, the police won't give you anything. You can hear it in the tone of his voice. He's incredulous that nobody else gets it. <laughs> I proved the bastards wrong, but I had, hadn't done much good. All, we, we want someone, that, something, the, this thing could blow open because the lies and all that here have been exposed. We just want some way to get it opened up. There was a lot of things like that where you'd think, what the f***? From Stuff, a new 12-part documentary podcast. He was into sex every day. The Commune. Sex, drugs, and a guru called Bert. There are crimes, but this isn't a who done it, it's a why done it. Good God, adults agreed to this? The Commune. Find it now on your favourite podcast platform or at stuff.co.nz slash the commune. You've already been welcome to Centre Point. Having sat through hours of these conversations, this is what I reckon you need to know of the case. Actually, it divides into two parts before the bodies were discovered, and afterwards. Don't worry, you don't need to write all this down or anything. But if you understand a bit of the story, it will help you see how ordinary people become extraordinarily obsessed. Anyway, here's the before. Jeanette and Harvey Crewe are farmers in Pukekawa, in the district. They're murdered in their home sometime on a Wednesday night in June. 1970. Murdered. Harvey Crewe. It takes five days for them to be reported missing. Milk and bread deliveries pile up at the gate. The local stock truck driver, who's due to pick up sheep from the crew farm, can't get them on the phone. On the Monday afternoon, the father of Jeanette called at the farm to see... Jeanette's father, Len Demler, goes around and finds a gruesome scene. Bloodstains on the floor were the first indications of a double murder. There are no bodies, but there's blood everywhere, and signs of two lives abruptly ended. Cutlery and plates of leftover flounder still on the table. One of the most staggering things about the case is this. He finds abandoned, alone in the house, crying, Rochelle, the crew's 18-month-old daughter. The only occupant was the 18-month-old daughter of the couple. But strangely, he leaves her there while he goes to cancel the sheep truck and call the police. What's that about? And this... Had someone been feeding Rochelle for the five days she was alone in the house? Evidence from a farm labourer working on the farm opposite of the crew property told of a woman, and a passerby mentioned she'd seen a child on the crew property. Between the dates of the alleged shooting and the discovery of the disappearance. Believe it or not, there's still debate over that. But if she was fed, who by? Who fed their baby daughter? They're questions that still divide the district. Logically, what do you think? Was Rochelle fed or not? Well, so I feel like I'm being tested when they start to ask me questions. Of course, course she must. Of course she was. Had to be. Five days and all those <laughs> bottles and stuff that were left around the house. I mean, yeah. it's yeah. pretty obvious that yeah. there was only one person that was in there feeding her. Yeah. Like it had to be a man because yeah. <laughs> because she was leaving <laughs> bottles all over the place. There wasn't yeah. anything tidy about it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yes. It's funny and friendly sitting around the table just chatting, and I wonder if I've left my journalistic hat at the door with my shoes for a while. But I just can't help getting drawn in. Because he knew that she'd been taken care of. We're talking about Jeanette Crewe's father, Len Demler. They reckon he knew who fed Rochelle or was somehow involved. It was more going back and cancelling the sheep truck. Yes. Mm. Uh, yeah. He was involved, that's why. Yeah. He knew. Yeah. He knew that she was being fed. You wouldn't leave her in the house that there was obviously something going on like <clears throat> with all the blood stains right, and all that. Number of reasons. I mean yeah. there yeah. could a yeah. freaky place to leave a yeah. grandchild. Yeah, and because mean, he wouldn't have known if well, if he didn't know what was going on, was this person who created all this blood still there? Yeah. Mm. Was, yeah. The, was he hiding somewhere? Was he hiding something? Yeah. 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 Oh, God you would have picked her up smart and got out of there. Yeah. Anybody would have done that. Yeah. Even if you yeah. Lindemler's behaviour didn't go unnoticed by the police early on either. He was the initial suspect for a whole bunch of reasons, which seemed pretty valid. But then he was dropped as the suspect when the police attention switched to Arthur Allen Thomas. But why? It's another stone in the Thomas family's shoes. And after 48 years, there are lots of stones. Okay, this is where we need to get to part two of the short history of the crew murders. The afterwards. 
after the bodies were found. Two men in a boat spotted a body in the Waikato River. Two months on from the discovery of that gruesome scene, Jeanette's body is fished out of the nearby Waikato River. It was Jeanette Crew. Harvey's is discovered a month later in the same river. And, like Jeanette... Both victims had been shot through the head with a .22 calibre bullet. Beneath Harvey's body, police divers find a trailer axle. Harvey Crew's body was apparently weighed down with an old axle. The axle will become a crucial bit of evidence. One that had belonged to Thomas's father. It helps swing the whole focus of the inquiry when police come across a suggestion that the trailer axle came from a local farm belonging to Arthur Allen Thomas. Stubs that matched the axle were found in a tip on the accused farm. So that's the short version. Of course, there are so many other details. They accused us of doing fencing for the crews. That's myself and Richard's... Uh, when you look Richard. at uh, what Lovelock says about Vivian went to bed at 9 o'clock, so Arthur's still... You know, at the, the end of our questioning, I thought, this man's dangerous. Now, in order for him to do that, he's lied. And it's pro- I can prove that. There's a lot to take in. And as we leave, I'm starting to feel a bit daunted by all I've got to catch up on. Over the next few months, I try to get up to speed. But it's a long and complicated process. At one point, Buster Stuckey, the brother-in-law, rings to ask how I'm getting on. He's also yeah, giving me a I mean, gentle hurry along. Yeah, that's been the, the, the hold-up. It's just trying to, trying to figure things out. because it's He's so the one who seems to have sense. the job of keeping me on track. I mean, yeah. But it gives me a chance to express my confusion. Even if I am talking to someone who has been mired in confusion and frustration for 40-plus years. Just a warning. I was in a car at the time, so the sound quality is not the best. Yeah. It, it, it's, um, yeah, it's a conundrum. It really is difficult because... As I say, it seems that, so Len Dembler was the suspect early on, and there was good reason around that, and some of his behaviour was extremely odd, to say the least. Yeah, and then the way that he, you know, it was reported with him, um, you know, going away and leaving Rochelle there even after he discovered her and things. Apparently, you know, it just, it just some of his behaviour was very odd to say the least. We'll just leave it there. So so he was the suspect, but then suddenly he was dropped, attention turns to Arthur, and then from then on, for the next forty years, every answer just comes back from the from the police to the Thomas family. And I just I don't know. I just don't get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can see where you are. Yeah. Howdy. How you going, Des? Eugene. Yeah, good. How are you going? I'm all right. Yourself? Good, yeah. Good. I I spoke to Buster yesterday, did you tell you? Yesterday? Yeah, I spoke. Buster rang just to see what I was up to. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me, give, give me a hurry along, I think, which is good. <laughs> Over the months, Des and I have dozens of phone calls like this. They all start the same. Hey Des, how are you? Howdy, 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 howdy. How are you? How are you doing? Alright, how are you going? Alright. How are you going? Alright, how are you going? Yep. Alright. Hey Des, how are you? Alright, how are you going? I'm alright. I don't want to say too much on the phone. Those glasses yeah. will be just in person. Okay, yep, alright. No, that's alright. We talk about the case, but other things come up too. And um, that was sad about Pat Booth. Pat Booth was an investigative journalist who worked on the story in the 1970s. He's just died. Did you go to the funeral? No, I didn't get there, but uh, Arthur went. Yeah, I heard that Arthur was there, yeah. yeah. Did, did, did you go? No, I wasn't there. But, yeah, no, obviously a great man and did, did amazing work, so I've um, mm. got a lot of respect for him. But, um, yeah, I heard, I heard that... Some of Pat Booth's best work was uncovering police corruption in the case against Arthur Thomas. I mean, I had as close an overview of the case as anybody, I suppose. And it's one of the of reasons the case past, is famous. The killer bit of evidence against Arthur Thomas was a 22 cartridge found in a garden outside the crew's kitchen window. The cartridge came from Arthur's gun, but Pat Booth revealed police had planted the 22 cartridge. But it seems to me that if the cartridge case evidence can be faulted, uh, then a considerable amount of the other evidence must come up for close scrutiny as well. It's the main reason Arthur Thomas was pardoned. This man is really innocent. Mr McNabb, the Registrar, Court of Appeal Wellington, confirmed that Thomas's uh, conviction had been quashed. To the family and to lots of other people, it also meant something else. The murder weapon 
must still be out there. Somewhere. That's next time on The District. The District is a Stuff Circuit podcast series. Written and produced by Toby Longbottom, Paula Penfold and me. Toby also edits the series. Phil Johnson and I recorded the sound. Blame me for the dodgy of it. The final sound mix was provided by David Liversich at Radiate Sound. Archival sound recordings from the RNZ collection at Nga Taonga Sound and Vision. And our music is from Audio Network. Mark Stevens, Patrick Crudson and Keith Lynch are the executive producers. We had digital help from Su Yun Son and Alex Liu. You can find out more about the podcast series and the characters in this story over at stuff.co.nz. Have a look at the website where you can find extras, including some wonderful archival photographs. Oh yeah, and some recipes. We spent so much time in farmhouse kitchens, we thought we should share the love. I'm Eugene Bingham. Thanks for listening. Hooked on Crime and Mystery? The best crime, documentary and mystery movies are ready to watch tonight at Stuff Picks. Go to stuffpicks.co.nz today to rent the latest blockbusters and new releases for just six ninety five dollars with no subscription fees. Thanks for listening to The District. We're giving Stuff members access to bonus episodes of the podcast. Go to stuff.co.nz and log in and we'll tell you what to do next.